electrical issues sparking concerns, some tire troubles, safety stickers screwed up, and me trying to play catch up for the last two months. This is your RV Recall Report. Recall Report! Theme song! My name is Josh the RV Nerd. Welcome uh, to this two months worth of uh, catch up recalls here. It might seem like I've got a pretty hefty list, but again, I am catching up. I just wasn't able to get to this last month. Um, for those who are just joining us, this is something that uh, we do out of our dealership here, not to call anybody out, but simply to provide safety information out there. When you're the first owner of an RV or a vehicle, you should get notices in the mail uh, when there's a recall put out on that. But if you're the second owner, if you buy it used, if you buy it from a private individual, the manufacturer may not have your information to notify you of these things. So we put those out there simply as a courtesy, and we do it regardless of brands. You'll hear us talk about some brands that we carry here, some brands that we don't. Our goal is to keep you and your family safe, to keep you on the road. Um, and this is the kind of thing where if you're in various social media groups, like if you hear a name mentioned, you're like, oh, I'm in a group that has those. Please share this video. Just try to keep that safety information out there. Uh, you never know it, it, how the smallest thing sometimes could literally potentially save someone's life. That's the goal here to keep everybody safe. Now, another quick little note. Um, I've done a few of these before and I've always tried to, str I've, I've struggled to find a format that works really well. I think what I'm going to try to do this month, and I really need your feedback on this, um, is I've always kind of just covered these real quick in the video and then I've left more details in the video description, but that requires a lot of scrolling. And some people watch on something like connected TV where you don't always have the easy option to scroll. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a lot of reading information on the screen today. And I'm going to try to leave it up long enough that you'd be able to pause it and read you know, whatever you need to. And if your screen goes dark when you pause it, tap it again and uh, like if you're on a phone or something and it will take the darkness away typically and you'll be able to see stuff and review it as long as you need. Then down in the description for those who do have the ability to access that on like not connected TV, I'm going to put I think chapter markers between some of these to make, uh, make it easier to reference back as you need to. If this format works better, let me know because in my head I'm thinking it's going to be a better fit. All right, so kicking things off in the world of vehicles here, uh, Chevy GM has put out some notices on some 25 and 3500 pickups where it sounds like there's some wiring issues related to the electronic brake control module, maybe shorting out, which is a potential fire error. Um, and until this has been addressed, they are recommending that you kind of try to park away from everybody as much as you can. Try not to park indoors so that, God forbid, your vehicle is one of those affected that does happen to go haywire. Um, if there is the unfortunate case of a fire, it does stay localized and doesn't spread and, and cause, uh, you know, like the, the great Chicago fire, which I don't think that was actually, didn't they figure out that wasn't actually started by a, a, a cow knocking over a lantern or something like that? I don't remember. I don't, why do I get on these tangents? Doesn't matter. That's all I have for vehicles today. Let's get into the towable stuff. Overall, not a bad, considering there's two months worth here, not a bad run uh, for the towable RV industry. Um, I, I tell you what, I've stay tuned if you're a motorized type person, I've got the biggest chunk of motorized recalls I've ever seen. I think what I have for just this video is the same as like all the other recall reports for motorized stuff I've ever put together. So if you're looking for motorhome stuff, stay tuned for just a minute. Meantime, um, Keystone has put out uh, some notice on their Arcadia fifth wheels. Um, there's nothing physically wrong with the trailer, but the safety sticker information relating to their tires, like the tire pressure and the 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 GV or the GAWR uh, rating sticker, may not be listed correctly. So that if you went to replace tires, if you went off that sticker, you wouldn't be putting the correct rate of tires on it. Um, that's you know obviously a, a potential highway safety item, which is where all this comes from. By the way. All this information that I'm sharing through this video is always available through the NHSTA website, National Highway uh, Safety Transit Authority, something like that. I don't know. But um, that information is always available to you. I do you the courtesy, though, of peeling out all the RV stuff that I can find. I won't. I, I, it's possible that I've missed some things because there's a lot of listings there to try to get these out for you. Heartland RVs put a notice out on some 2020 and 21 um, Cyclones and Road Warrior toy haulers, evidently the transfer switch uh, for the generator may not be wired correctly, could potentially be a, uh, a fire hazard issue. Remember, I'm cruising through some of these fast, so if you need more time to get to this stuff, hit the pause button and you'll have more time to review it. Speaking of toy haulers, uh, Forest River XLR series has put a notice out on some 21 and two more recent uh, fifth wheel toy haulers they have where evidently 
they may actually be missing a little protective panel which helps keep some wires separate from like the aluminum structure of the uh, the upper deck of that thing which could cause a short and cause some things to kind of clip out and potentially pose a fire hazard. And again, we're fair. A brand that we carry here is Coachman Catalina. They put a notice out on some of their 22 travel trailers where the um, uh, the panel that separates the, the furnace from the cooktop isn't sealed properly. And what could actually happen is when you go to cook, it could actually suck air down and suck the flame downward, which could potentially uh, pose a fire risk. Over at Heartland RV, uh, they put a notice out on some 21 and 22 uh, Mallard Pathfinders that um, similar to the Arcadia thing that I mentioned, there's nothing physically wrong with the trailer. They just may have an uh, a, a axle sticker, tire sticker, basically, with improper information on that, where if you went to change some things after the fact, could put you in a potentially unsafe situation if you followed the wording on that sticker effectively. Um, I'm going to try really hard not to make some puns on this one, but no promises. Uh, over at the, uh, the Puma division of Palomino, it sounds like... They may have forgot to put a ventilation uh, pipe on some of their black tanks, which could cause uh, a buildup of methane gas as the processes of breakdown take place inside that uh, black tank, which could uh, cause an overpressurization of that tank, which could actually cause a poo explosion. Um, probably not going to be something that could kill a person but definitely not something anybody wants to deal with. That sounds like a stinky situation. I knew it, I knew I was gonna do it. Jayco just put a notice out on um, so a limited number of J Feathers and J Flight SLXs that have, it sounds like a very similar thing going on to what we talked about in the Coachman Catalina where basically there's a, there's a, there's not a seal properly positioned so that if you cook uh, start you know flipping on your cooktop it could invert the cooking flame and potentially pose a fire risk. Uh, Forest River's newer East to West Division uh, put a notice out on some of their um, Alta travel trailers. Those are the, I believe that's the laminated series from those, where the deleteres are sticking in. Yeah, Alta laminated trailers. Um, a uh, LP uh, quick connect fitting may not have been screwed on properly, which could allow for a gas leak, which is obviously an unsafe thing. Forest River's Aurora series uh, recently put out a notice where they may have actually put uh, some deranged tires instead of E-range tires, as is indicated on their safety placards uh, on some of the trailers that got out from the factory. Um, the uh, ob obviously incorrectly sized and rated tires could be, you know, put you in a situation of overload, uh, you know, it, just all kinds of bad towing safety things going on there. Um, if your RV is one of those that's affected by this, uh, my understanding is dealers are basically, uh, you know, on your behalf getting new uh, wheel assemblies, tires, and that's kind of one of the nice things on this is all the things we're covering this video, if you're not familiar, these aren't things that should cost you money. These are things that are getting fulfilled by the manufacturer to get you safe. Ugh. The, this has got to be the biggest recall in the history of the RV industry. If it's not, I'd really love to know what was. The, uh, the old Wintech 6020 propane regulator that's gone back like decades um, as they continue to, to search through their records to find more and more RVs that could be affected by this. A whole bunch more Keystone RVs have uh, joined the list. Um, I always, you know, there's nothing wrong with waiting for the manufacturer to fulfill the parts. The problem is this has been such a widespread recall that replacement regulators haven't largely been available. So if you are someone who's been affected by this, I know that some people have done an aftermarket swap that's not exactly, it's not expensive, it's not hard. I'm not saying you should have to ever spend your own money to make up for a, a safety item like this, but if you have done something like that to get yourself back up and camping sooner, please leave some notes in the video description. Leave us some comments like with a link to a regulator you found that works something that's available. Maybe we can help some other people get this addressed and get back on the road. Although obviously if you go replacing it with your own parts, that's on your dime. If you want to wait for the manufacturer's money to cover it, we do need to wait for their parts to come in. I don't like that, but that is unfortunately the way warranties work. Whew. Like I said, we got a chunk of motorized stuff today, so uh, buckle up. Get it? So stupid. Huh. I don't know that I've ever seen one exactly like this before. Um, Thor Motor Coach is putting out a notice on some 2017 Challenger, Miramar, and Outlaw motorhomes. Evidently uh, uh, from 2017, so they're, they're reaching back 
four or five years here, which is nice to see him stepping up to take care of this stuff. I, you know, it's like, it's easy to say, oh, look at all these recalls. What a bunch of garbage, whatever. When they're going back multiple years, be way beyond warranty uh, expectations and still taking care of safety items, I've always really appreciated that. I think you learn more about a company um, and, and who you're doing business with, whether it's a dealership, a manufacturer, or another person, when things don't go according to plan. Do they step up and do they deliver when things don't go as expected? That, to me, says uh, a lot right there. But what's happening is it sounds like some of the uh, the laminated exterior baggage uh, doors, the, the front facing of those could just come flying off and obviously pose a you know significant uh, safety risk to the other motorists on the road. Water break. Stay hydrated. Um, I ordered the large. This is all they would even give me. All right. Newmar's putting a notice out on several of their motorhome series where it sounds like a machining defect in some of the hardware that they have in their steering assembly could actually cause a pressure buildup, which could break a thing, which long story short means you could end up with a loss of power steering. And when you're looking at a big rig like that, it's kind of a big deal. Triple E Manufacturing, um, who, who makes some really slick, smaller kind of rigs here. I wish I had more of a chance to touch some of those sometimes. Um, their uh, uh, exhaust vents uh, in, the, in the rig um, could actually cause a heat buildup in certain areas where around some wood framing could actually cause the wood framing to ignite. Now, I don't know if they've seen full-on fires or if they've just seen smoldering. Either way, you don't want to get into any of that because smoldering naturally leads to fires. But again, this is another one of those recalls that's going like back almost six years. So it really says a lot to me when a manufacturer is willing to step up and, and they could legitimately say, eh, sorry, this stuff's out of warranty. But they're not doing it. This could have had two or three different owners by now and they're still stepping up to take care of it. That's a just a good sign of a good company, I think. Huh. This is another one of those kind of like that uh, regulator recall. Um, there is... Uh, Apparently, a certain type of adhesive used more specifically to the motorized industry and in some of their videos that I have. Did I say videos? I'm doing a video, so the word videos in my head. In some of their motor homes, what's wrong with me? Um, that uh, the adhesive that holds the windows in the rig uh, seems to be systemically failing. Uh, for Travel RV, which makes things like uh, Realm motorhomes, may have uh, had some units affected by this, and they're getting their, uh, you know, they're getting their day in the sun for this uh, supplier-related challenge, unfortunately. And that's another, so a lot of the stuff sometimes, like the regulator thing, it's a supplier-related recall, but it is fulfilled through the manufacturer's departments. So it's unfortunate sometimes, I think, the RV manufacturers, who are certainly not without sin. We're not perfect, they're not perfect, but sometimes it's the supplier that's actually fallen short here, and that's not always as obvious to people, you know? Some of the new Forest River Entrada motorhomes have a situation going on where their, I think it's the front brake lines, could be rubbling, rubbling? Rubbing against, obviously, I, I should really reshoot this stuff and edit my videos, but I'm like, one and done, baby, let's do it live. Their brake lines may be rubbing against their front power leveling jacks, uh, potentially causing a wear in the line and causing a loss of uh, brake fluid and loss of braking as a result. Breaking break my face against my desk. God, what is wrong with me today? Some notices on um, some Spartan K1 and K2 chassis from the shift group where uh, the rear, basically the assemblies that help hold the rear drive axle in place may not be tightened correctly. And when you're vibrating down the road like a rolling earthquake may be loosening and, and causing things to break loose back there, which massive obvious safety issue, especially with something that size on those chassis. Uh, a rare miss from Tiffin on something like this. Typically, their workmanship and craftsmanship is totally on point. But again, I've, I've never said anything that's perfect. There are certain 21 and 22 uh, Fate motorhomes where it sounds like maybe one of the outlets in the RV uh, may not have been wired properly, leaving an exposed wire in the wall, which is an obvious, you know, fire hazard and whatnot. But that is, that is very unlike them. Normally, they're very good about the detail stuff like that. Uh... Jayco's chassis supplier has put out a notice here. Um, it sounds like a bunch of their 2019 to uh, 21 uh, motorhomes under the Integra division may have a, uh, a faulty dash panel, basically, which might just go blank while you're going down the road and effectively leave you like flying blind. 
Nexus RVs put a notice out. Um, and I've, this is another one that I've seen a bunch of times. Um, it, it relates to their, their stove top, basically something may be over tightened, which is breaking a seal on an O ring as a result of the over crimping and allowing a potential small, but continuous gas leak, which is obviously very dangerous. Um, I feel like I've seen this one before too. So I wonder if this is another one of those, they got the stove top from a supplier and the stove top may not have been done correctly. doesn't matter either way. Again, hit the pause button if you need more time to review any of these uh, to see if you have one of the coaches affected. Uh, over at Thor Motorized, they have a notice coming out on some of their Venetian motorhomes. Uh, it sounds like the power awning assembly may not have been put together correctly, which could actually uh, allow it to like open when you're going down the road and which is going to cause it to cause a, uh, catch a bunch of air parts are going to break parts are going to go flying dangerous for you dangerous for other drivers uh another under the integra group but i've seen this one before also um there is a potential fuel leak related to their models that have the uh, the cummins l9 diesel engines uh where there's a a, a fuel leak that could uh, occur between a a hose and the fuel pump which could end up causing well i mean you know it's fuel it's flammable I don't think I need to explain that. Sometimes I'm a visual person and I really have a defect. Like if I if I can't see something, I have a really hard time understanding it. Thor's put out a notice on a, uh, a couple of their Scope and Rise series motorhomes, uh, 22 series, where an LP gas line might be too short and uh, creating an excessive, if it's too short, how is it creating an excessive bend? Basically, something's getting kinked and potentially causing a pressure buildup in gas line, which could cause it to rupture. I wonder if it's looped around something, and if it's not long enough, it's wrapped like around a frame or something. I don't know. I don't know why I feel the need uh, for me to try to picture this for me to explain it to you. The information's right here. Take a look to see if yours is one of the ones that's affected. I need some caffeine. Wow. Uh, Tiffin put out a notice also on some of their Wayfair motorhomes dating back to 2018 where it's possible uh, a one of the water tanks, I don't remember which one, uh, could potentially like bow down and, and pop out of the supports and fall down and basically knock out the exhaust pipe on the rig, which can leave, you know, it's, it's, there's problems related to that, problems related, related to leaving debris on the road. I quit. Oh my lord. Um, another from Thor on some of their magna, ma magna, magnitude and uh, I tried to combine the words magnitude and omni. Magnitude and omni motorhomes where a gas line may have actually been inadvertently routed through the leaf springs, which, you know, damages the gas line. And that is it. I, uh, obviously not necessarily uh, the most skilled with words today. But again, the goal here being to put out the information that helps everyone. Again, if there's something here where if you're in a Facebook group or a big uh, you know camping group or something, please share this information out there. The goal is to make sure that it is seen so that people have the ability to uh, follow up on it and, and get these things addressed if they're one of the folks that are affected. Again, this is very helpful for people who are not a first time owner where warranty registrations and things like that aren't always on file for a company. And if you appreciate the fact that we uh, do our best to try to find the time to put this information out there, please like our video. Leave us a little comment that just says thank you. Those things help this message spread. And if you want to keep in the loop on more things like this or the news updates that we do or any of our walkthrough tours or tips or tricks, please hit that subscribe button and we'd love to catch you the next time around. Hopefully, uh, I'm uh, a little more... Uh, well spoken the next time around. Thank you for dealing with me today. Pro tip, you can always just mute me and then play the video at a uh, uh, faster speed and it, it, it cuts me kind of out of the loop that way. But short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.